So we'll just do a little tiny bit of engagement and marker charging. Have you started any of the, mar yeah, okay, great. So just do a little bit of that. So what we really want to look at is just, we'll do a little food session with marker charging, et cetera, and then we'll have you play with it for a little bit. She doesn't have an out. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Ooh, maybe we're gonna teach her to out today. That would be sad. <laughs> the session may switch gears. I'm warning you right now. <laughs> All right, go ahead and do a little bit of food stuff, and then we'll go from there. Hello, cutie. All right. So I wouldn't start with that. Just feed her a couple times, right? So just get her there and just get some food, get her attention, give her a couple pieces of food. Because I want to judge if she's not into it, right? We shouldn't be. Like, I want to make sure I've got connection. How vigorously is the dog taking the food? Good. Nice job. And do more yeses because she's not really disconnected. And be ready to feed her multiple times after your yes. yes. Feed her. Feed her again. You don't need another yes, just one is good. Just feed her a few times, then stop again and make her activate you. So when a dog drops its nose to the ground after a reward, it's a sign that we need to vary that duration of the reward event. More than one piece, one after the other, that helps hold. Otherwise, the dog recognizes you fed it once, you're going to have to reload, and they'll check the ground to see if there's any spare pieces down there. Good job. There we go. Nice. Yeah, yes, boom, as soon as she turns, right? So she's looking away, as soon as she looks back, yes. mark and move, good job. Nice, cool. You can do a couple of good markers here. What are you feeding her with? <laughs> Another thing we haven't talked about a little bit, but it helps the size of pieces, et cetera, can make a difference. Like sometimes we use really small pieces because we don't want the dog to get full but they're not as satisfying, and then also we drop them a lot. They're really hard to hold on to, right? So I have a tendency in the early stages to like slightly larger chunks. It's okay, we're good, because we're gonna switch to the toy here in a sec, right? Go ahead, and yes. Do a yes there, right? So you're losing her a bit. Goods are boring, boring. There's no movement, there's no release. It's all about the food. This dog's taking the food, but it's not not crazy food driven, right? It's not like the dog's like, gotta have it ripping her fingers off. So it's, it's functional levels of food drive certainly, but the dog is not crazy into it, right? At least not in this environment. And, and so as a result, I'm gonna do way more yeses than goods because goods are all about the food. There's no movement. The Malinois, it's gonna like movement, right? And I'm just handing it to the dog. And the act of releasing a dog is inherently interesting plus the additional movement, etc. Good, perfect. All right, so then go ahead and zip up your bait pouch and so that you don't throw food all over the ground as you dance around. No, you won't, but I'm saying if you start playing with the dog and you leave your bait pouch open, food flies out of it while you're playing with them and then it's all over the ground and the dog breaks off playing to go look for food on the ground. So I always close them up because <laughs> I've seen people run and spill their bait pouches as they're running around, right? All right, and then you can break out your toy and Yeah, it's a lot going on. She just came off food, where's just one. Don't go towards her, right? So anytime you're going to tug with her, go ahead and move, away. move backwards, right, away from her. So chug with her a little bit. And then if you want to keep the leash in your hand, you can, right? Straight back, yeah. Uh, so the, and what happens, the dog avoids when she stops and bends over, right? So instead, you mind if I... Come here, girl. Come here, girl. Oh, I know. Hi. Hi, sweetie. Hi. Oh, hi, baby. So I'm going to keep the leash like this so I have it so she can't run off, right? But then, playing here, I'm going to... See her expecting me to reach for it? Come on, baby. Yes, come here, almost. 
yes, good girl, right? I just stay upright and move away from her and wait for her to come up with her head up. If I start reaching, you could see her reflexively kind of already waiting for me. She got close and she says, you're gonna grab it, right? Yes, then I grab it, right? Get it, girl, yeah, nice. Oh, yeah. Ooh, good girl. This line is crazy long. Yes, good girl. And so she comes up in front of me and I reach down. So here, take that, just kind of back up, don't pull her, just go ahead and back up. Come on, stand up straight. Yes, right? So the more I stand up, the more I invite the dog in. The more I bend over, the more, I, there, yes, yes. Back up, there, good girl. And careful about the shaking out the laundry, the whipping straight up and down, <laughs> like steady pulls forward on her mouth. <laughs> good. Let her have it and stand up and back straight up. Come on, come on. Yes, there we go. Good. Let her have it. Yes, good, nice. Already she's thinking like, oh, pushing it back. You're not gonna take it from me. You're not gonna grab it. I wanna push it back at you. Let her have it again. Back up, back up, back up, right away. Yes, as soon as you let her have it, come on, here. Right? Don't wait till the dog's running around. Immediately back up. There it is. Yeah, good. Yes, there it is. Yeah, she's already trying to shove it into you. Good. Spin around so you can back up nicely. Let her have it and back straight up. Come on. There. Yeah. And don't say yes until she pushes it at you. Right? Not when you let go, when she commits here. Right? Let her have it. Back up. Straight away. Yes. Yeah. There's your yes right there when the dog launches up at you. Right? And this dog will be slamming it into her in no time at all. Like, well, I want to bring that thing right back to you because that's where the action oh, is. Right? Yes. Excellent. Good girl. And now she's getting kind of dialed in on the toy. So we absolutely could teach her to out here, but we're not going to right now. Right? Mm -hmm. And that's because she showed a little bit of like, I don't want to bring it to you at the beginning of the session. Right? And we've got her bringing it nicely here at the end of the session. Go ahead and have her back up. Better bring it to you again. Come on, come on, come on, girl. Let's go. Yes, there. Yeah, good girl. So I don't want to start outing her. I want to make a couple more sessions like this, but she should learn to out soon, right? Post-teething, Malinois puppy, like, she's into it. She should learn to out pretty soon. It gets harder the longer we wait here, right? And so it'll be relatively easy, I think, at this stage. Good. There. Nice job. Good work. Good. Good. And then here, what I want you to do, just to see, Go ahead and take a handful of food in your hand and see if she'll trade for the food. All right, so just hold the food down there and see if she wants that. Will she? Just kind of hold it right there. Don't worry about trying to take it away from her or move. Just see if she'll drop it, let her in, in if she'll eat the food, or does she not want it, right? And don't go anywhere. You got good, perfect. Yeah, no problem. And you can let her pick up the toy and you can walk off with her. So, just as a, as a, a diagnostic note, I'm just seeing like, okay, now you're playing. Do you want the food while I have this? She doesn't really want the food, right? She'll sniff it a little. She might eat a bit, but she's concerned with losing her toy, right? And, and so, so uh, this is her play drive is likely, the dog manifest very medium food drive through the beginning of the session. And it may be the treats, it may be whatever, but the dog's not crazy for food. The dog's functionally motivated for food. There are things we can do to improve that, and we will to be able to use food in our training. Her play is going to be good, right? So the dog wants to play. And once she got warmed up, right? It's a lot. Young dog playing in a new place. We all see that kind of stuff. Once the dog got warmed up, she was getting pretty dialed into it and nice and want, wanting to push it back. So that's good. And then she didn't really want to switch back to the food. She's all, no, the toy's way more fun, right? That's information for me. So the food sessions with her and the play sessions are going to be compartmentalized for a bit. I'm going to get you food driven and I'm going to work my food stuff for behavior shaping right? Marker charging, sits down, stands, target work, etc. That's just easier to do with food in the beginning. And then she has, uh, t she has to teach the dog to play, right? So the dog wants a toy, has to learn to bring it back, has to learn to let go of it, all those things that we talked about this morning, right? The dog has to work those things out. And then once those things are good and the behaviors are coming together with food, I can, for a, the dog that's going to be more toy motivated than food motivated, begin to switch those behaviors to the toy. Like, so Cindy's already done that, right? She can work food, she can work a toy and go back to food, but her dog now likes the toy more, right? For sure, he likes his ball more. And so she's in the process of transitioning a lot of the behaviors that she shaped with food initially onto the toy, right? It's a little bit down the road 
for Dana's dog, right? That dog needs to learn the rules of play and then needs to have, have the food work done enough so that she begins to understand the behaviors before I replace it. It is possible to teach all those behaviors with a toy, but it's much more difficult. It takes a lot more mechanical skill. It's harder to do micromanagement manipulations with a toy. If I want to control your nose and your butt and have you down and sit straight and all those things, those, those are harder to do with a toy. And it also requires a lot more impulse control, meaning my play has to be further along so that my dog will play with intensity out the toy. I can hold it there, use it like a lure, and they're not biting it when I don't say. So it requires a lot more ability to contain themselves around the toy, which usually takes time to develop. And so if I'm going to teach with a toy, Usually the dog is older before I start that process because it takes me that long to get the play up to a, an appropriate level that they'll support all those controls on it so that I can use the toy in those circumstances, right? And so for right now, she's going to keep those two worlds separate, right? So there'll be spots, so she'll let it carry it around. She may go for a walk. The dog's going to get it less interested to drop the toy, go off and pee, no problem. She just lets her drop out that way. Or she may go back by the car, take good treats, put them in a bowl, the dog wants that, she spits the toy out, she gives her the bowl, tucks the toy away, whatever, right? So the toy ending with me, right, ultimately, is for dogs that are crazy possessive, right? So ultimately, if I'm having possession issues, this dog does not want to bring the toy back to me, does not want to let go of it, those kinds of things, I would like to make the game with me more. And so the fun happens when I have the toy, not when you have it. And I don't want to let the dog possess all over the place because they're like, yeah, this is what I really want, right? I want to keep it and I want to keep it away from you. So then I'm reinforcing that behavior by letting them carry the toy around for a half an hour. She was really easy to make interactive. Like in two minutes, she's jumping on her with the toy, right? With very little effort. This dog doesn't want to keep it away from her. She would have created a game already trying to keep it away from her because she kept bending over and grabbing at it. And the dog started to play the, I come up and jump away and come up and jump away game. But it's not because she's super possessive. Once she figures out the games with you, she's all in. She's gonna be jump, she already, she's leaping into you, no problem there. She's gonna be, you're not gonna be able to keep her off you. She's gonna be the dog that's punching you in the stomach with the toy all the time, like play with me already, right? So there isn't a lot of possession there. And you could tell by how she held the toy. She wasn't like clamp, it's mine. She's there, she'll drop it, pick it up again, let it drop in her mouth. So there's not extreme amounts of possession there. So I can let her carry it off, it's fine. Let her carry it off, she carries it around. When she drops it, great, I trade her for food or let her drop it, I go let her potty and I pick it up later. It doesn't matter. And then some of the more possessive dogs too, I have to let them possess as a reinforcement while I'm installing it. So sometimes you don't really have a choice. Some young German Shepherds, I wanna get them to wanna play with me, right? They bring it back, I play with them. They bring it back, I play with them. They bring it back, I play with them, and then I let them carry it around a little bit because that's what they really like, right? And I use that to reinforce the behavior, and I don't, I would prefer to do it without that, but some of them are like, that's what I really like, running around in circles carrying this thing. So I'll give you that if you will interact with me. I'll give you what you want if you interact with me. I'll give you what you want, right? And I'll do a little bit of that. If I can avoid that, I, I prefer to. If I can get the dog to say, like, the game's here right off the bat, that's what I'm gunning for right, in those spots. So, and then she'll be rel rel relatively quickly ready for an out. Just a note on tugging. So Dana was doing a little bit of what I like to call the shaking out the laundry move, which is like, <laughs> oh, like that, right? Hard on the dog's neck, right? right? It promotes getting the dog really locked down. What you want to do when you pull is imagine that I'm trying to pull the toy out of the dog's mouth forward. So when I tug, I tug like this up and into my body, and then I'll just step out of the way and set the dog, and I pull like that. So those are all here, which promote, it's straightforward on the dog's neck, which is more uh, easier orthopedically on them, but also what it does is it makes, the, when the toy jumps that way, it makes them want to clamp down on it, right? But be careful about whipping it up and down and side to side like that, right? It's hard on their neck, and it promotes also kind of bad gripping behavior, ultimately. If you enjoy our videos, we post our social media videos to our website, Learberg.com a week or two before we post them to our YouTube channel. These early release videos can be found on the front page of our site or by going to the site and selecting video on demand from the toolbar and then select free videos. Thank you for watching.